Faith Church, hope you're well. It's Wednesday, March 30th, uh, another edition of House to House. Um, I hope that you have been reading through Romans with us. Uh, I've read through Paul's letter to the Romans, I don't know how many times, but every time I read through it, I have uh, two uh, immediate impressions. One is how brilliant Paul was. Um, secondly, how how gracious God is. Paul's entire letter here, I mean, some people call this kind of Paul's, just just the culmination of his, his message that uh, he gave and God called him to give to the whole world, not just to Israel. Um, and it's brilliant. And today we read through chapter five and chapter five includes this this portion that's high, it's chapter five verse eight is quoted often. Many of you know it by heart, and uh, it basically says that God demonstrates His love for us in this: that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I want to read you just a little, little bit uh, of that section from the message, which is Eugene Peterson's paraphrase. This isn't a translation, but it's his interpretation of what Paul writes there, and I just think it's really worth hearing. So just try to do your best to listen to these words today. He says, Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. Think about that. Jesus, he didn't wait for us. He just does what he's going to do. He presented himself for the sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. In other words, we contribute nothing to what Christ did on the cross. It's entirely his initiative. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for, and we can understand how somebody good and noble could inspire us to selflessly sacrifice ourselves. And we do understand that. I, many of you, I think even I, would probably die for certain people. I would die for my kids, my wife, my friends. Um, but most people wouldn't die for an enemy. Most people wouldn't lay their life down for someone who's trying to take their life. It's just unthinkable. Nobody has that kind of love. And yet, this is what the this is the verse A I talked about. But God put his love on the line for us in this by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatsoever to him. That's an interesting way to put it. Jesus dies for us while we were no of no use to him. In fact, we were against him. There's a, I've quoted him before, but Tim Keller um, has this quote. He, he says, this is the definition of the Christian gospel. The gospel is this. We are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dared believe. And yet at the very same time, we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever would dare hope. Both those th two things are true, and this is the essence of the gospel. To hold these two things together, even though they, they seem to... <laughs> conflict with each other. One, we are we are far more sinful and rebellious towards God than we would ever dare imagine. Um, and secondly, at the very same time, we are far more loved by God in Christ than we would ever dare hope. Um, one of my prayers for myself and for you and for our church is that we would, we would come to just rest, like truly rest in the love of God for us. We would know He loves us in this way, that He, he doesn't love us because or if he just loves he just loves us and that, that love would set us free to then give ourselves that we might become like him um, but it all has to begin with placing our faith that this really is how god sees us and not just us but everybody um, if you haven't been reading through romans i really encourage you such a it's a perfect letter to read through as we move in the season of lent um, tonight we're going to gather again for our Lenten service uh, at seven o'clock, and I've heard from so many of you how encouraging it's been to hear the stories of of uh, different brothers and sisters in the church about how God has been working their life. And tonight, Jeff May, many of you know Jeff, will uh, share his story. I, I got to hear it at length yesterday, and God's got some has done some amazing things in his life, and I'm so eager for him to share some of those with you and for you to be encouraged in your own faith as you hear that. So we'll. we'll gather at seven. I hope you can come, or if, if, if not, at least to tune in online. And uh, we will also share the Lord's Supper together. It'll be good to be together tonight. Um, 
wherever you are today, I pray that you would know God's, the Father's love for you and the, the peace and grace that comes through Christ and the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. Peace.